Okay, I got the strategy tester out. And we're running a moving average robot. And I, I guess I should have the moving averages on the screen to duplicate what the robot's trying to uh, base its trades on. But I'm assuming here that the moving average is crossed over and it's been trapped in a buy position. Oh, just got stopped out. Loser. Let's go to the graph. Not good. Okay, if it's 10 grand in the count, I'm at, uh, how do you feel about this uh, balance we're running here? 99.61. At 41 bucks, I can handle it. I mean, the 39 bucks, I can handle it. I ride the storm out. So the brokers, typically, when you download their platform, they will not have the rectangle in here, so I have to add this every time. And unfortunately, I moved the files. I had to rebuild this thing because I moved the files around. Instead of copying them, I moved them. So don't don't move the indicators out of that monitor trader. <laughs> it's not something you want to do on a regular basis. I'm like, why isn't the template kind of yeah, it's kind of too dumb. But uh, the rectangle is to me the ultimate uh, trade plan, trade planner, the ruler, the gauge, the uh, also, if you're going to count uh, the five periods, um, the two periods, the very dynamic breakout stuff where the market gets really quiet and uh, you starting to get really, something's going to break, something's going to snap. So you can either run the rectangle as an area which I prefer the area thing in a way because it makes me feel like um, it's in the pool. Whereas if I frame it, it's in the box. So here it's it kind of reminds me of a uh, a deep pool. So I'd be buying here. I'd be a big buyer. Now it could drop in the next um, week or something. And this is where you put the trend line in, rate of change. The current rate of change is always dynamic on this trend line because uh, it's the current, you know. If the markets get very quiet, your trend lines come together, you get a triangle, there's going to be a very intense breakout. That's when you do want to put your greedy ratios up because that every about every um, 8 out of 10 bars, I figure after uh, big consolidations, it's even more explosive. And when it's very violent, it's very violent in both directions. So it's um, a little disturbing if you if you just let it go, so-called, let your profits run. So after it breaks out, it gets very choppy, but not uh, um, noisy, like swinging up and down violently. So that can be a little bit tough. If you're used to just making 40 pips or 50 pips with a 20 pip stop, you could trade like that. There's no, I'm not saying you can't do that, but um, I kind of want to get a big cushion so I can trade from 100 to 300k as the market plunges or or goes up, goes skyrocketing and some kind of uh, spastic uh, the end of the world move. So those kind of things, and like I said, psychologically, can you handle the um, the fact that you were up uh, 10 grand, now you're down um, 12 grand? That's always a little rough, because, you know, look, look at this thing drop. Now, if you're short, which I wouldn't be, I've never seen this data play like this. I, I, I mean, don't know. 2019, huh? you know, somewhere in time. It's the same story, different day. We got to make one change here. I'm going to take this grid off because I don't, it has no price attached to it. It's so distracting. So I'm just trying to get the cleanest thing I can. That's why it's called the Simpleton Channel. People think um, I'm saying that I'm stupid. Well, I think the dumbest people would be the best traders because they just wouldn't overthink this shit. But, you know, you can mushu, you know, it can push a salad maybe at the uh, forex bar, but I don't know about the uh, th this uh, 
constantly putting stuff on. I like the classic lime color. This is the uh, lime. <laughs> so Metatrader just never changed that. They said, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be that lime. It's in your face. So I take off this grid before I lose my mind. It's, it's just ridiculous. I'm going to put on the, uh, we can see the end of the day now. So that clears up a lot to me. If I'm going to backtest this, I'm going to have to picture myself, and I, I'm not going to. I'm going to put the sessions template up in a second and hope it's going to run. <laughs> it didn't run last time, but right there, the sessions right here, half hour, half hour, two half hour bars down. If it closes below, my rule is, if it closes below this su support. Right? Can we all agree that's the turning point? I mean, it's 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 written in stone. Now, how many bars back that is here? Where it's, here's where it's that like three and three drive people talk about five drive. That's so. There's a three drive and there's a five drive, which would be Elliott wave. Three up, five up, three back, five up, three back. But the C wave, um, you know, uh, speaking just in 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 terms of a non-linear time see the problem with the Elliott wave he didn't put the if you take the time out yes you can you can make anything fit that there's always a, a a burst a pullback a burst a pullback now in the trend there's more bursts and pullbacks i mean there's more the pullbacks are gentle out of the breakout explodes wave three's the biggest it drifts and you, you can't actually plot it out exactly people try to number it cracking me up you know, you just have to say, well, that was fucking a big move. That, that's that got to be wave three. We're going to consolidate or we continue, and that's the wave of a wave of a bigger wave. Or um, you're getting trapped a, a little bit. If you if you start to get in there on the top of wave three, you're going to get fucked. It'll drift and, and make a triangle and just, I uh, suppose, um, lock up your margin in a trade that, just not going anywhere. But maybe that's what you want. Maybe you want to build a position on wave four. So after the burst and it pulls back, I typically am going to put, um, according to the theory that wave three is the biggest wave, a value wave, and there's five waves. And, and, the, and the fifth wave is a failure wave and then just collapses. Or But during, um, inside of wave two, wave zero, wave zero is the very bottom wave one is like um wow looks like um there might be a short squeeze coming wave two pulls back but it doesn't take out zero and then wave three is just blow your brains out short squeeze and then wave four is the scalpers or you know the people that are going to just hit that is completely outrageous price and ride the drift down or like a harsh a abc correction three waves down five waves up but if you're positioned yourself to sell the top of wave three, then you just going to enjoy that wave C, which is as violent as wave three, and you could just make a living there. You look for any insane candles, you know, like that was a beautiful one hour straight down like a bullet. But you know the feeding zone is up here. That's really what's what's to my mind what it fed on was this wedge here and that is just a power um zone actually everything above here i'd be selling above this this was the floor that just bashed through but now are you holding on to i say if you sell half your position here you bought here you dump you're holding half i think about getting out up here and then i would reload with limits but that's just me or I've already gotten out. Typically, I've got stuff that I'm getting out three and a half pips apart because I got in three and a half pips apart on the way down. So the trick is to set the basket. Um, now, you're going to get destroyed in some regard if you don't have some swing uh, tickets in there. Now, that's where you got to do the math. So I'm going to go to the um, so Hopefully, the session thing is going to come on. And it's going to be uh, easier to see the uh, 
So you can throw templates in here and practice this template. So it does work after all of that. So this makes it a little more clarity. You know, the candlesticks are cute, but uh, I really prefer the bar chart, but I know people, they want to see whether it was bullish or bearish candle. It, it kind of scrambles your brains a little bit. Uh, I think there here it does matter if you buy the candle that's on the floor, but I have a another template. I, I'm not running it now, but it's this line chart on top of a bar chart. Now this makes here I can't even tell. You know the mark. Like here you can tell maybe there's a couple bars here before it just collapsed to hell. That's why I have to run the candlesticks on top of the sessions on a larger time frame. I'll do it, but the bar chart. Um, it doesn't care about closing prices. We just have range, pure range on top of range. So it makes it very easy to think in terms of limits. Because if I bought this, I would have dumped it into fair value, which is this, some of it. And maybe when it got to here, I'd be like, yeah, we're really near the top of that range. It's fine with me to get out or hold on to it. If these are swing trades, this is a 25 pip uh, um, grid here. So if that is going to be uh, maybe a whole 25%, I'm just going to come in here with limits now. It's so easy. I can draw these rectangles off the uh, video software, but I can't do it on the, if I change time frame here, well, I can't change the time frame, but I'm going to. Uh, so the robot here is not making too much money for us. He's waiting for the moving average crossover thing. But I'm just going to trade it on a stacks and run the analysis here. On these, uh, right. So I'm going to presuppose I have these uh, based on, is this Friday? I don't know. It's, I don't know what it is, but we would have put orders in here. So we would get our first uh, fill here. It ripped up, and then I would leave the other tickets, and I would plan on it going lower. Yep, so uh, this is the um, European session now. I think they're going to take out the Asian session, so we move our tickets down here to buy more. So the art of it's going to be in this 25-pip grid situation. What do you suspe suspect... Uh, how many ticks you gonna fill? So here I'll do a quick. Uh, I'll speed it up a little bit. I definitely want to extend them. The expiration is gonna be, or just if you don't mind selling, I would sell everything above this. Definitely, this is gonna be the next insane place to sell. If I'm going to place orders to buy every new low in the half hour, it's going to look like this. So I'm running a tight script that lasts like 30 minutes. And those 30 minute scripts can be, it's, it's very, uh, and, the, and the deeper the script is, the longer it's going to last. So this is going to be your four hour scripts, your eight hour scripts. I'm sorry, 12-hour script. So you're halfway through the day. I would load the wagon below this. And I'd go get a mortgage. I guess I'd go get a, I'd go get a, a short a payday loan on that one. Like some of these moves are just so psychotic. This was a, a very good, beautiful, classic dip in this, in this uh, pool. And then rip back your back here. But the robot took a trade earlier where he got in. Uh, <laughs> he got stopped out because he, he was chasing it. But I wanted to flip the switch on that moving average bot and make it go go against itself and see if it performed better, right? Because if it's that's the theory, right? If it's blowing hedges, invert the criteria and have it uh, make money, and not really. Maybe you can a little bit. Um, 
the other option is to take um, get it get it to work half-assed. Get a bunch of half-assed robots here built uh, with certain criteria and run them all at the same time, which is what I'm aiming at. That that uh, multi-munching theory of multiple uh, a team of slot bots, you know, and I could oversee them a little bit and take profits when I'm like, really got in there, did you? Huh? Okay, what a genius move there. But it, my robot's based on how many pips it moves per half hour. So the slams down in one hour, it went down like 20 pips. Um, the robot's just going to buy it based on momentum. The robot can't see the, the um, that's that's me. I'd be looking at that and go, yeah, I can see. It's plunging, and this thing's trading like me. It does, but more disciplined, because every half hour it's going to pull the trigger if it's down 25. Then the other bot comes in at 35 with a wider stop to compensate for that. So they're all tuned. They're just precision tuned to a specific situation, but you got got 100 bots. But I just want to see if it chugs the computer. I, I lost the... Uh, I can't get to the other EAs right now and the other computers, so you have to load the program. And I didn't really archive them, so... I, I have to somehow load... A version of Windows on there to rescue them because you can't see them. I can't get to the data folder. I don't know how to get through the back door. They, I mean, so everything's so uh, laced in. You know, it's just it's, it's a bitch to run a uh, Windows. You have to like uh, be a computer technician. It's not. It's not very convenient. I'm finding it difficult not to uh, punch the computer. So it looks like we're climbing out of this hole here. The other thing about the bar chart that's interesting is it really, you don't really have a feeling of, a, you just have a feeling of territory. It's not like, oh, it went up, it went down. It's just kind of nice because it also means that you, you, uh, you can also draw your triangles on here. So uh, forget what I said about the uh, trend line, but the volatility line which looks like this for my for me the you can draw beautiful uh, things like this like look at this formation of this triangle right here something's got to give now it may kick outside of that and then whip back but it just means that there's no denying right now at this moment it's getting very quiet right at the baseline of the fair value right I mean you're right there I wonder what the robot's going to get a little whipsawed. Let me speed it up a hair here. I get pretty pretty impatient bored. Okay, what do you what do you figure we're going to go um, plunging down and then up or up and up and up and never plunge down? So I think we're going to come down at some point. That's why I usually trade from the long side on some in some measure because if I put in this. Um, area of tickets right here for the next eight hours I'm kind of hoping the market at this rate of change and it looks like the market's capable I can just put all these these uh, nice thing with the trend line the moving averages don't extend into the future unless you offset them but here I can go out you know like a bad like a harmonic bad pattern and say, oh, I, I think it's going to go walk down this channel here. Now speed it up. Okay, so it looks like we're breaking out up, but I think it's going to rip down again. I'm still going to get filled, even though I didn't get in here, so I don't usually, and this thing sold it. How do you like that fucking robot? Metatrader moving average sold it. You know why? It's in a downtrend. <laughs> so maybe I should. The, the two, last two trades in this robot have been ass backwards so maybe I should flip the script on this fucker go in there and just go Yo, you know what well, I just turned it around what did we let me speed it up so I still got my buy limits down there come on you can do it oh come on you can film me yes yes oh yeah so what's the better trade you this is why people say well that, that triangle didn't work out I don't know man I got it here at the breakout it's getting all quiet breaks out and then rut row, because there's a little uh, baby uh, area here. There's a 
lonely wick up here and we just kind of tagged that and the scalpers are on that one the best place to sell new highs and then plungeola right plungeola here let's zoom in i'm staring at these glasses so i'm staring into this thing okay, let's try to get this in the center of the situation we see into the future a little bit here i had it scrunched up because i was looking at the i want to see as much as i could No, it's, it's kind of tough here with MetaTrader. <laughs> so I slowed it down to like uh, almost real time there. I don't know, is that real time? <laughs> I'm not sure what real time is. I always get this thing like cranked. But uh, so now we're to the floor here for the scalpers, right? Banging on this thing. But yeah, this goes on over and over. It's just about the pips, you know. I think here if we had a 40 pip stop to make 20 pips, we could do pretty good here. But we still have to have some 20 to make 13 and 27 to make 13, 27 to make 21. So the more you can get that smoothed out, the more consistent, the more you just have a nice uh, situation where you're not. When you're in really big, it's only for um, hitting the top, right? The sweet spot of the, the amount that's... Uh, comfortable because if you blow you out of those tickets and you start to trade other currencies you know maybe the other currency will start to engage if you're going to buy the dollar swiss and buy the euro to the dollar you're kind of in a hedge and if you're the wrong set one well, not in a hedge but you're in um where if one's dropping if the dollar happens to be really getting its ass kicked then you kind of know there's a little play between those, just like the uh, pound and the euro or the dollar and the yen. So if you just, those are the majors, but I think the yen, you're just going to need more money. You're going to need twice as big account, maybe three times bigger account. So you can trade the, the, the Swiss uh, with the same fixed uh, margin requirement. You just you need two bucks at uh, five hundred one. You just need two bucks per thousand. All right, so it's banging on the floor here, and you know the thing is, in the half hour there, since you bought here really heavy, and you got filled on some limits into no man's land, and now you're here, take off half the position, ride the rest up into this, which is the middle of the road here, the original giant pivot and just get out but then I would come back in with the buy limits and start it all over again I'm not prepared to put sell limits up here but you, you, you really, I mean really should <laughs> I just don't like selling right now but I'd start selling pretty heavy above that above that this is definitely going to be the big contention zone if it makes it up here it'll be a big battle so even if it does cut through that it's still going to get this pullback, wicked pullback, just like off of this, off of this uh, big, thick, uh, old price there, and it just rips off those those things. It's just how it is, and uh, here's the trend: eighty percent garbage. Like this is a fuck fantastic move, but then. Not so uh, easy to figure out, um, gee, should I sell more? I mean, the people that sold here got their ass kicked. You know, they just go like this, yeah. They sell here, they sell here. Okay, now they're making some money. But if they don't get out on that one, that's like, yikes. And are they going to are they gonna make money on this one? Are they going to get their ass kicked? Let's see. I don't know the future on this. Let's hit, hit the... For, fast forward button nice thing about this playback you can just either go to real time and try to give yourself patience I'm playing back the whole the rest last 20 years in real time but uh, it goes to 32 or something I think 32 is a fast so we bought more see 
and this and the and the uh, trend traders on the s south side are happy you now it's, it's starting to collapse. So it's going down, and I don't have the luxury of looking back. I don't, we could be going into some fucking three-year low here, but I suspect the time of day. Well, that was the U.S. markets open, so there must be news right here. Eight o'clock, then eight thirty is the news. So this this session starts at eight. This is seven p.m. This is two a.m. This is eight p.m. So after whatever the new and then the news comes out at eight thirty, and then holy shit, here comes the stocks. And the robots, I would be on. Uh, for still holding this, like I said, got to scalp. You got to scalp that first bounce because you had to get out here on something, or you can't buy more after it closes here, or this big close down is going to pull in my uh, strategy number 428, where I buy if it's down 29 and a half pips at the, on a half hour in the U.S. session. U.S. session is pretty frisky, huh? So here's the... Uh, 7 p.m. and then at 2 a.m. they get the party started buying if you bought this area on limits because you knew this was going to be that's it low the previous day is going to be the ripest place to get in but it's just for the scalp you know so if you don't scalp out of that then well you just don't but I would might just be holding that still because on my targets outlanders that's why this 20 10 and 20 pip targets important just like a tight stops important you got to get out of some of this stuff if you're going to trade in a in a basket of range which i do uh so if i go up to uh three four standard lots it's because i'm getting filled on limits or i'm pissed off and i just keep hitting the buy button now here, if I saw this move, and I wasn't have, have enough limits in, and I'm uh, like, wow, this is, I happen to be awake at fucking 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, this is 3 in the morning about here, I'd be, all right, um, bye, 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 bye. And I do wake up in the middle of the night, look at the market, uh, especially if I'm in some big position, I sleep with a phone next to me. And um, it's really hard psychologically to keep buying uh, when it's dropping, <laughs> if you tried it, some guy said he was trying to maintain this uh, big position. Yeah, I mean, if you're really seeing the bigger picture, then and you oversize the position, it's just nothing more than that. You're just oversizing it. But yeah, that robot. That's why I had one had robot work for me, just coming in every half hour and checking to see if anything's screaming, and then just go against it. And I would have my limits that I place way out in this um, no man's land. But this is quite the crush. I'm going to delete all the objects so we can get to the uh, I can turn on this navigator. I'm not going to be able, not going to be able to do it. I still got this. I got, so I can start over. Hopefully it's going to come back. I think I might have wiped out my indicator. Now I got to put the template back up. That's what I got to do. But look at the sell. It's right. It finally making money. Let's see how it's doing. Nope. Still we got to cash out. But see, it's only in a 10K. So maybe yeah, I was wrong. Because this would, if this is a, when this cashes out, we don't know what the, the target's going to be. I don't, see, I don't see a target. Do you? Hmm. Maybe it's waiting to hit a certain percentage. Wow. I'd be buying it, though. Okay. Here we're back with this template. So quite the beat down. These are the buy boxes. I might have a different color for this thing. It's confusing me. You think I'm in that session or something? So definitely getting a nice gobbling up. I'm ready to buy a 50 pip zone. That's my 50 to 75 pips to make 100 pips. So we're buying into this below the European session. So we knew that European session was, that was the low. 
And when the U.S. markets opened, we were near the high. We plunged through it. I want to buy, like, really just get this, get an, I would say, let me try, try to picture what it looked like here. If I'm going to buy one, two, three, four, five, that's not enough. So I bought at the market, and I'm going to buy at the market if we close here. And I want to put a lot of tickets down here. And I'll just wait. So it's a real balancing act when this closes. Now, I probably would be buying because I'd say, well, you know, I only put like 5K in here because if you dropped uh, tickets and you bought into this, then you're underwater by hmm, almost 50 pips. So you would have started buying here. And that's probably what I would do. I'd like to get in on something here and then start buying closer and closer together like this. And then it's crazy. And then I got stops here and then I'm going to pull the trigger at the market. And hopefully these are going to be about, add up to about uh, 200K without getting stopped out of this ticket. So this ticket has to have a 40 to 50 pip stop. But to make a little bit of money, or actually long-term money, the swing traders, the swing trades are built around the scalp so that it's satisfying the um, swing trader in me. At the same time, it's kind of a balanced diet, I hope. Because I don't mind buying here with a 75 pip stop quite a bit. Ding, 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 keep pulling the trigger. That's very satisfying, too. And then here, if it closes here, I'll just be like, ding, 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 buy it. The psychology, um, the feeling comfort comes from buying at least something here and something here on the first breakdown. Now here you get the, here you make you can it's the same kind of deal where it takes out Asian law, goes up to here, right? It takes out Asian law, goes up to here. Now he takes out deeper here, but it's that kind of trade where you have to scalp that. If you have sell limits up there here, they don't even fill. And that's why the argument for the confirmation entry is to put the sell stops here and then just as soon as they trigger it, they're like, well, here we go. And that is typically a retail trade. It breaks out whichever way it breaks out. You put a buy stop here, a sell stop here, whichever way the wind blows. But your targets have to be 25, in this case 35. You make 35 pips here if you get out here. But you're coming under this, right? You're coming into this territory, so this is the big buy zone here coming back. We, we wait for that half hour. We don't have to wait, so we can crank it up here. We go to go to fast speed. Let's put some uh, half tons, but uh, I, I am going to buy at the end of this half hour. So this is pretty fast speed here. Half hour. Waiting for that to close. All right, so get the view of this cop, this this buddy. Okay, definitely filling me up on the limits. I'm getting in front here with limits now. The 60 pip range. That's when I go for these big drops that cover 40 pips and just go swing trade mode. Okay, we're definitely getting some nice fills there, waiting for the close of this. I'm going to go to 31 speed. Doesn't seem to be fast enough. It's getting my nerves here. Can't you pick up the speed a little bit? Okay, but 31, which is pretty damn fast. Damn it. See, I can't even stand on playback. I can't handle it. So the reason why I wanted to buy limits because the, the, the thing hasn't closed yet. So I really like to get this serious uh, fill. And here um, the limits are winning the market order because this still hasn't closed that candle. 
Yeah, something's happening there. Uh, you know, you could actually build a uh, a filter here where you sh we reveal the uh, FOMC 2 p.m. on Wednesday, Eastern Eastern Standard Time, and you could have it like, uh, yeah, that's because uh, you see how quiet the market gets before an FOMC, <laughs> and then it just rips to hell. That's pretty funny how quiet it gets. Why is this taking forever to complete a half hour? Is it just me? Jesus, people. I can't take it. I'm just going to go 30. I'm going to go the fastest speed. Fuck it. But see, it closed down. And the and the and so I'm just going to have to go to this speed. I can't take it. But yes, you bought that. Now you can see all your, um, oh, nice fill there on that top. So see how fast that was? See how it's filling these top zones? Right, this is the ultimate short, right? And then you buy here and you buy here. Now you get to buy here. It's already pre predefined, pre described, right? Here you just shorted this. You cashed out there. Buy limits, buy limits. Big sell here. You're short. That's the break even, comes back, top become a bottom. If you held it, tap tick Tommy here in that session. Nice sell up, selling a high high of that, waiting for it to cash out, and maybe you're up here. You want this in the buy limits here now? Sell limits. Sell limits, buy limits. Filling on those buy limits. Cash out to the floor. Buy limit galore down here. Have these cells up here. Next day. Tokyo top tick. Now, buy limits. Getting filled. Buy limits. S sell limit. Just, just to nick the top of that. Okay, short now. Cashing out of these guys. Now this is scary. I don't know. Uh, I have to zoom out. I can't remember. It's either like blistering fast like this or a creeper gear. So we're just gonna have to go blistering fast and hope we. Now see how see how frightening that is, because this is probably this could be like um, maybe a five year high in the look back. I'm not looking, but see how vicious that is. That's what I'm saying. This vacuum is so tremendous that that is a problem. This guy, the the you know the uh, pike, you know pike over at Trader's Way. He's getting. You know, I gave him. He came in a stream one day, and he's like, uh, "Yeah, the abyss, the abyss." Yeah, dude. Can you imagine going short here? Get your clock clean. See, here's when it gets violent. I was talking about the violent chop. Sell limits up here. What a great, what a great fucking trade. Now buy limits here. Buy limits just got filled here. So he got, see how these filled and they're cashed out. These are filled and cashed out. Another beautiful fill. Retested that area. How about that? Double dip. Man, that was beautiful. Buy limits here again. Big buy limits here. Sell limits, sell limits, sell limit, buy limit. Oh, major fill on the buy side there. Oh, tremendous. Now, here's where you get clobbered like this. If you can't afford that, are you waiting every half hour for it to close, too? Look at this thing just cleaning house on this whole stair stair step. All that vacuum. Look at that. You you have to cash out here. You're not you can't wait for this. That may never happen. But this is when it gets this is when it's vicious. Look at that. Oh my fuck. I, if I had Oh jeez, that's just beautiful. That's so many fucking pups. So violent. Look at that thing just blow your just blows your brains out. And the you know the goobers are waiting for the moving average crosser. They're gonna take some short trade. Maybe they got in here. But look look what's going on here. Oh, US session. Whew. This is like when the news comes out about uh, whatever the fuck at eight thirty. Oh man, this is just bloodbath. I tell you what, man. Now if you can handle holding this for five days, you can possibly make it back to here. I don't even know what's gonna go on. But that was a nice buy, right? Buying that 
that just happened there was the uh, took out the Asian session. Perfect scalp to the floor. It went down here. Comes back off. Oh man, woof! Big buy. Bought this whole thing here. Got eight thirty. Probably some big news. Bought because of this. Oh, wow! Look at where it's hitting now. That's premium buy. So if you, you that's why you Martingale in, in the big tickets. And why did it feed so hard? Because this is big lonely fucking wick down here. Look at that smash and grab in one fucking day. See, this is what just blows people's minds. In one day, this thing went down 75 pubs and came up 50. So, yeah, if you're going to wait for it, you're moving, I get it. This guy, this quant guy is like, how to keep your system dramatic trading keeps you so far out of trouble. And, <laughs> oh, boy, look at that. Look at that move. Keep anybody out of trouble. This thing's trading its ass off. Is it getting killed? Wait. Hey, look, it's not doing too bad. Look at this damn thing. Son of a bitch, I found the Holy Grail. Well, I'll be damned. I guess it trades different sizes based on whatever. It's doing pretty good. Look at that. It's fucking cutting goddamn uh, making money. See, that's as good as I should just take this and just tweak it. Get a team of these fucking guru bots. All right. Did it cash out there? See, it cashed out on a trailing stop, so I kind of didn't make as much money. Uh, really? Okay, new buying new lows there. See, but this is actually range trading. Even though it's drifting down, it's very range tradish. He went short up there. Yeah, it was a good trade. It's the perfect trend for the robot. And it's not dry. It takes buys and sells. It's very objective. All right, another day, another dollar. So here was the big uh, the big reward here from the, because uh, there's no fills on the sell limits. You know, it never made a higher high. So when you're trading this style, it's totally about the, uh, the, um, Higher, it does never makes a higher high, so you never go you never go uh, short. Just here you do. You just want to get filled there. So I trade this from the long side because my fills are coming in on the long side. It makes lower lows, so I, I buy this. I buy this. This is a great buy. This uh, kind of quiet, kind of choppy. Buying again. The short was the here's a good short fill. So here's the only short side fill. I got my sell. Eight hour, twelve hour. Let's let's say twelve hour tickets because we've got uh, these three sessions. So in Asia, you could actually for twenty four hours, you could drop all your tickets in Asia for the next day. Wait till the next, you know. So these are all buys. You move your buy block over. Now I don't like this. I don't like selling into this. See. That's why, here, here's a short right off of this. You're short now. Cash out. Cashed out to the support of that. Now you feel all that you probably, look at they just made all that, you know, just made uh, almost 50 pips there selling above this U.S. session or the high of the day also. So I wouldn't go too far, and that's the problem I have with ICT. He's going to he's gonna have too many rules. Here I'm just looking for the high of uh, the day. Or the U.S. whatever comes first, because here um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna miss out on a trade because uh, we well, didn't do this uh, thing here. Definitely, you have to know I'm buying this stuff. That's obvious. Now that's a, only a 25 pip window, but I would have started buying here actually because I'm just too aggressive. I would do it like this. I want to get into something as it takes out these two sessions. So I'd be buying this whole plunge thing here. Now, now big cash out. Now I feel like it's going to range. I can really make some money on this uh, retesting, retesting, retesting. It just seems to always come back. It's always coming back to retest. So let me uh, 
put the, I gotta put the template back up because our playback it doesn't let me. I just kind of marked it up too much. Plus, the, the robot had all these fucking balls all over the place. Couldn't see the forest for the fucking trees there. Um, cell limits there for the scalp only. I think it's going up. Oh, that was. That, see how fast that was? Why so fast? Because this finally tagged that. So that is the ultimate trade. Rich, grace, amazing ratios on that. 50 pips with a 25 pip stop. Rarely happens, but that's what it looks like. Here's here's your long side right here. You bought you bought the uh, when it took out the law of uh, Europe. It's, it's going so fast. Bought, you bought this. You cashed out. That was the seller's window here. Anything above this or above that. Now it's going to be super chop here. We could buy below that, and this is why. You see how on the sell side of that, let's say I don't want to be on the other side of that because I think it's going up. Look at this. Now that's where people say, well, what about, you know, you just got, you got, if you have a 20 pip stop, don't worry, you're out of it. That's why they don't trade. Uh, now look at that half hour. Just look at this thing burn. So this is why people get clobbered in these markets. So I always run a, I always run a stop that is uh, now I'd put buy limits in below the session, the blue session that's forming right now. It's going to be uh, wait for the pullback, the crush down. Yeah, because I think it's uh, here you you could you could have sold everything above Europe right there. And I'm looking for it to come back to the blue session here, but that's a big, that's a 50 pip thing, you know. That's 50 pips. It's coming up on the high. Look how, so this is probably the biggest rally. I wouldn't call that a trend. I don't even know what to call that as far as a wave. I guess it's one giant wave three here, so. All right, finally there's relief. That could have been Friday there, looks like. Look at the bottom of the chart here. Let's see, this is Monday, Tuesday. It is Friday. No, this is Friday here. Okay, here's Friday. So that was Thursday. That was probably the uh, jobs report. Let's see how it started right there after the blue. That's when the jobs report comes out. Oh, and it's terrible. So I'm buying. Now I'm going long because it took out the uh, Tokyo session there, that blue. I bought that, and I'm buying heavily below the European session. Now I'm buying heavily below the U.S. session from Thursday. But that's a hundred pip. That's a hundred pips up and a hundred pips down. Jesus, look at that! It's probably going to go lower now. Here's where it just goes a little bit lower. Typically, it takes that U.S. session by a little bit. Yeah, because I can see the I see the people are taking profits here from that huge sell-off. But it looks like it's going to tank some more. Take out the previous day low, and then buyers come in. And then there's a nice big, big, bigger pip rally off of that. Then it's a big, uh, big, exciting. Because uh, now it's consolidating. That was wave three, so we expect this is going to be wave four, three days in. Now I'm running buy limits, trailing underneath these sessions. There's some nice scalps there. It's a quiet market. You can only run the uh, 25 and uh, 40, 50 pip uh, scripts because, you know, the swing trader, this has uh, already gone down on this chart. We got a 200 pip range, almost 300 pip range on the chart, the whole chart. So that was nice to uh, selling up into that. That would have been, now you're looking for this big sell off here. You're short. Now it's quieting now. Now I do think it's gonna uh, go lower now. What it got filled right there. Twenty-five pip window. I like to buy the twenty-five to fifty pip windows to try to make 
25 to 50 pips to 60, you know, on, uh, on and on. But it, you're dependent on the conditions you're in. So you're really walking around with a toolbox that has um, some outlandish tools in there that, you know, what if this situation comes up where there's 150 pip? I'll just move, move my targets. So if I think it's going to drift and there's some uh, my wide stops left behind or just enough left behind because um, I could move those targets. And to me, that's just like buying more. This is like buying more at the market because I'm kind of, I typically don't even move my stops on that stuff. It was so far gone away from that stop that I guess I could get hit on that, but it had to go back uh, against me severely. So that was wave three. This was uh, like wave four. Now like we're trying to take out the high on here, but I think I'd be heavily selling in this uh, window now. I think this is that sideways enough action that this is a big deal, this price. So that would be my sell window. And if we take out this high, that's going to be my sell up in here. I got to hold on to that. And spiked down very quickly. So we had a cash out of something there. And now I just keep selling more. I'm selling new highs now. So it's easier for me to trade like uh, this because it's obvious to trade. Just keep selling new highs on and on. I could still be short. I'd still be short from here. Still waiting to cash out. And then I'll start buying when it drops below. This uh, so coming here is a new buy zone. Still shorting new highs up in the top here. Still cutting in there. Sell, sell, sell. And the expirations are like this. Keep selling it. And then just... Uh, Wait for it to pull back if it does. Sell the next day. Sell higher above this now. New selling window. Oh, nice fill there. Okay, now we're seriously short. Looking for a crush. That took us back to here. That's not too bad, but we need to get really go nuts here and start coming back to this breakout point and then if you could hold to this so if you martingaled into the top of that you could have made that money but i definitely get the fuck out of most of it when they came back to amazingly uh take out the u.s session by just a few pips or they holding on it's december 29 anyways that was a nice buy there. He's just buying that U.S. session again. They're tipping. Now they just nicked the uh, session in Europe. But see how we're in a 25 pip range now? And this shit's going like 100 pips. So that's what really is just mind-blowing. Look at this crush down here. And these are some tremendous moves. This man, Like this up, up 100, down 100. Like up 100, pause, up 100, down 100, drift up, up 100, down 100 and now it's just I'm buying all this stuff here like we always knew this would be amazing buy zone and look at look at all the way back to here it's hard to believe because it's such a, a, a ridiculous uh, move in a sense but yeah to run this forward in the space this is always going to be the premium buy zone so is this Bye, bye, bye. In one day, you dropped almost 100 pips. Just fell out of bed. U.S. session, maybe you drop a little bit lower. Uh, it looks like you could go lower here. That's one of those looks like it's going to happen. Where it goes, at some point, you're going to take out the low of the previous day, which you haven't done yet. And there you go. Crazy. Here was your sell. You really, if you have to keep on moving your stops really tight and wide to keep your wrist the same. See that that's the problem. It's you know you you sell heavy here, you know, but did you if you're gonna sell in big zones, then then that's not gonna make any money, hardly any money there. 
you have to keep changing that too. So it's even harder than to trade every zigzag on here. You'd have to get in a really uh, fat tickets in a narrow slot and then small tickets in a wide slot. And if you run the small tickets in a wide slot here, yeah, not too much money. Here's, but here's a nice uh, obvious fill. Like I said, I was going to make a lower low. And you did, and you bought, you loaded the wagon down here. Let's see, move these off this table. Right, so you bought that. And now you cashed out all the way back to the top tick Tommy slot, right? But this is really easy trading here because you can only, you can make 25, 30, 10 pips. really easy cons over and over as it churns sideways. But, yes, yeah, so it's something else. It really is amazing. But I do love this plunge. See, that was... Uh, breakout and back to the floor. That was my first scalp. Look at the look at the news just came out. U.S. markets just opened. Wow, unreal. Just amazing. Wow, it's fantastic. This is a true auction there goes down here. There's no moving average system that's going to get you in down here and cash you out when we take out this. You could go either way in that trade. You could have pending here to sell, pending here to buy based on the high and low, low of the last two days. It's that simple. Those two key points, and look how it just wrapped around it. The only difference is this one costs more if you laid them same space, but that's the, that's the trick. That is the the difficult thing is to get that right and say, yeah, if it comes up here, wow. Sellers galore. And when it quiets down, you got, like, here's a buy buy zone. Scalp to here. Take something. Hopefully it hits this and cash out. Or you're going to go short up here if you're not in the market yet. Big buy uh, signal here to put buy limits in. I just got filled on the short side. We got to scalp out if it hits here. Or if it comes back to here, we got to scalp out of something. U.S. session looks like it's going to finish uh, at the high. Okay, I scalp out of my break evens back to the breakout point of the uh, European session. Now, um, we have sell limits above this, buy limits below this session, U.S. session. Just got filled on that in Tokyo. Buy limits in there, big buy limits here, really buy a big, big big ones here. And then this is like the, I'm sorry, this is the, the lowest low. Here's the new um, plunge zone. So we bought that. We scalped to the floor. That's a typical thing. Breaks it, comes back to the break scene of the crime. And buy limits there. So to run buy limits only is just... It reduces some of your trades because if you can't handle this, even though this is a great trade, if it moved too far, and then you feel like maybe I should just buy or so it changes your feelings. But here it's a real um, soft decision because I'm running a hundred to two hundred tickets through this when these moves happen. So if I'm frantically pulling the trigger at the market, I might be in a uh, 75k just by buying at the market, and I picked up a hundred. 20k in limits so it's a 200k position and this is getting really quiet in here but you see what I'm saying anyways back to the movies back to the oh, I just watched this movie called uh, Rolling Rolling Vengeance and uh, oh man this is a classic you know just just wicked you know crashing just wiping out killing the whole family and then raping the, the hot chick it just was amazing just your classic, just total scorched earth movie. Wow. Ridiculous.